And now, moving into NFL big game previews. Week one of the NFL season, Chris is pumped about this. This is his time of year. This is what he does. He specializes in NFL talk, right? I, 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 no, I just like football. Yes. And I like NFL <laughs> football just as much as I like college football. I can understand I don't it. have a favorite. And uh, and you 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 seem to like college a lot more than the I NFL. I love college. Well, I do too, but, but I don't. I, but I, I love different. football. Yeah, I understand that. I don't. I don't care what level it is. Look, I like football. I like college football more than the NFL, but I do like the NFL. So, with that said, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six wonderful sports books, and you can bet on NFL and college at all of them. They're all great. Chris and I were down there last weekend. We enjoyed ourselves immensely. Stayed out until, what, like 2 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. I mean, good gracious. I, I was feeling it the next day. Feeling it the next day. I can't do that anymore. We probably will. But I tell myself that every time I go out because the next day I'm just I'm I just exhausted. Need to, I just need to make sure it's, I don't have to we, get up at 5.36. We, we, don't, we don't go out and get drunk. We don't, like, nothing like that. It was just we stayed out. Got a late. few pops. Watch we, had a, we had a few, but it wasn't like we weren't hammered. We weren't obliterated. Uh, and, and yet, here we go. We only had college football to watch last week. We got uh, NFL this week. So let's talk about the NFL previews. Let's go ahead and move through these. We'll try and get through these a little bit quicker than we did the college ones. Game number one, Thursday night, NFL's 100th season. Of course, they're going to start it off with something spectacular like Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers against the Bruise Brothers and the Chicago Bears. The Bears, a three-point favorite, minus 110 is the juice, 46.5 is the total at 7.20 p.m. Thursday night on NBC from Soldier Field in Chicago. Mitch Trubisky, people are torn on this guy, right? Is he good? Is he not good? Nobody really has an answer. I don't guess. He he is w- one of the few enigmas of the NFL. Yeah. We feel like we understand who most of these guys are, especially the quarterbacks. You see them so much. Mitchell was just one of those guys where nobody's really sure what you're getting. And and you don't necessarily have to with this team. No, Matt you don't. Matt Nagy has figured out that if I just get this guy to not make mistakes, I've got a good enough defense, a good enough running game, there are enough weapons at wide receiver in order for us to be able to win games. They went, what, 12-4 and four last year? Or 11-5? What was it? I don't remember. Nah, Either way. Stuff off the top of my head I wasn't prepared for. Uh, I, I want to say 12-4. and four. I could be completely wrong on that. But um, the game is at home. This will be kind of a revenge-type situation for the way that the opening of last season went, where they were up 12-4 and four last year. You see it? Set up there in the, uh, the yeah, top. right there. Yeah. Twelve and four. All right, I was right on that. There you go. My, my brain did not fail me that go round. I like the Bears a lot here. I they think do. it's going to take the Packers a while to get used to their new head coach, Matt Lafleur. I do think that this new offense, this new idea, this new coach is going to work out okay with the Packers. I don't think it works in Chicago, where there is actual, literal hatred between these teams. I think the Bears want to get back. Obviously, they got back at them middle of the year last year. But the way that that first game went down, where Aaron Rodgers goes out with what looks like just a season-ending injury, and he's carted off the field, and then he comes back, and he's playing on a gimp leg. And is gimp offensive? Can I say that? I don't I don't know. I mean, you can, I don't know. You can say it to me. I won't. I won't. If, if that offends anybody, I'm, I apologize. I'm a pervious <laughs> of offense. I apologize. Personal attacks for that. hurt, but like <laughs> something things say. I didn't even think about it. I was like, oh my lord. Uh, either way, he he had an injury, came back, let him down the field, scored three unanswered touchdowns to win the game. I I think it embarrassed the Bears. It led to a really good season for them. I don't think it happens here. Uh we we gotta make picks on these, right? What what else should we point out? What is David Montgomery gonna look like here? So I think I think the Bears offense is going to look Different than last year. I do think they're going to be improved, much improved. Um, I, I've heard multiple people talk about the <clears throat> the offseason for the for the NFL is is really long. We have the entire month of August 
where it's just so much chatter, 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 chatter. You hear so much about these teams. You kind of hear everybody goes from good to bad, and it just depends on who you're listening to that day and how they're feeling. Um, I, I think the offense is going to be better. I think the defense is going to take a step back because Vic Fangio is a, a genius. I believe that, and losing him is massive. But at the same time, you still have all the dudes that were there that were running this defense. I think they're going to be fine. Are they going to be as dominant as last year? Maybe not. But if the offense takes its step forward, they take a little step back, the team can continue to run and 10 game seasons, 12 and four, not outside of the realm of possibility. I think they beat the Packers and I think they beat up on them. I, I, I think it's going to take a while for this offense. And, and I don't know. So you think they'll eventually get it figured out. I don't know that I believe in Matt LaFleur. I don't know that we have any history to know that this guy's going to be a good coach. Now, I don't mean to, I don't mean to hate on the guy, but his track record is standing next to Sean McVay. Okay. He, he's not allowed to call plays. He's yep. not allowed to make any decisions. We don't know how much game planning he had in that, but then, he had all the game planning for the Titans. And and they got worse. And that actually. offense got worse. It yeah. went backwards. All right. And somehow he parlayed that into getting this job. But, because job. the NFL is enamored with this freak offense that McVay's doing. I, I mean, the, the same thing happened in Arizona. I don't know if we're going to talk about that game or not, but at some time, at some point in time, we all have to realize. This guy got fired from college. He was never better than 500 at college. In the Big 12 where nobody plays defense at all. Yeah. And we think we can put him in the pros and they're going to be great? I don't I don't understand the logic. So with that being said, yeah, I like the Bears. I like the Bears a lot. Yeah. And my dislike for the Packers this season is not. I, I just think they won six games last year. I think they're going to look a lot like they looked last year. Yeah, I think I, think I agree. So I'm, I'm rolling Bears minus three here. You got. Bears I also minus think three. at some point in time, we we have to stop with the Aaron Rodgers is 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 some type of god. He's just a dude. Okay, in the last I saw this a really talented whatever. dude. But, but but at the end of the day, I don't know. Just a guy. Like like the last whatever like fifty something games, he's like twenty four and twenty four. I mean, he's a five hundred quarterback over the last couple of seasons. That's that's his record. Okay, and that, all right, so last year, all last year, he played hurt. That's fine. Okay, he's hurt last year. What about the seasons before that? When he actually played, was he hurt every game he's ever lost? Because that's what I can't handle. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. All right, we'll move on from that. We both got the Bears minus three there. Sunday night, Steelers, Patriots, Patriots minus five and a half. Juice is minus 110 on that as well. The total 51 at 7.20 p.m. on NBC. Sunday night football from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. That's your boys. That's who you're going after. Dropping uh, another banner. Steelers. Oh, make six. Steelers without, um, which ties the Steelers, by the way. So, which of course they were going to hang that that night. Um, well, they didn't make. The schedule. I know they didn't make the schedule, but it's very fitting. Well, they're going to hang it. It's, it's the first fitting. game of the I know, week. Yeah. But it's fitting that the NFL scheduled the Steelers and the Patriots, and okay. so you got Ben Roethlisberger. And he's the only one of the killer bees left. Antonio Bryant's gone. Le'Veon Bell's gone. James Conner has shown up and looked good. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster has looked good. James Washington, we'll see. Uh, Moncrief, we'll see. They've still got weapons in Pittsburgh. The defense looked really good last year. And Devin Bush, Yep. so far in preseason, and I know it's just preseason. No, but no, no, it matters. It especially but matters for rookies. It, it really matters for rookies. And yeah. I thought it was going to take a little bit for him to get acclimated. And I might have been wrong. No, that dude's a stud. He is an absolute stud. Uh, the Pats, first real game with no Rob Gronkowski. And and not just Gronk's hurt and he might come back later. No, he's gone. Thing. He is gone. He's gone. Nikhil Harry on IR. Yep. Uh, that was a little shocking to nah, me. That doesn't surprise me. Um, but yeah, it, the Patriots minus five and a half here. I I lean Steelers because I think that this is a field goal game. Uh, I will take the Pats to win because it, I mean, who are you going to trust? I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. You can think what you want to think about this game. I I know Bill. Bill's taking the defense now. This might be the best defensive squad the Patriots have had. 
since, been a while. since those Teddy Bruschi, Mike Vrabel days. Um, and and I I think I think the Steelers are going to have a very difficult time scoring. Okay. I think this is one of those games where Bill is going to say, Juju not beating us. Find anybody else you want to beat us, but but one guy will not beat us, and he's always done it. He takes away the other team's best player. Yeah, and Juju is and is Juju's, the best Juju's player. Juju's that. And James Conner, well, well, good. He's he's not good enough to put is, a team on his shoulders. If if you told me gun to my head, and I'm gonna bet it's low. I'm gonna bet it's really low. Over under, I would go under because I don't think there's gonna be a lot of scoring in this uh, game. The total is 51. 51. Yeah. Um, but I would take the Patriots. I would lay the points. I at home. They a they just don't lose they at don't home. They don't lose. And honoring the sixth Super Bowl. And and doing all the things that are going. This game is going to be crazy hyped, and and they're going to be ready to play. They're going to score. I, I think offensively, if anybody thinks that they know what we're going to see, you're wrong. No one knows outside of Tom, Josh, and and Bill. That's yeah, the list. Even, even the rest of the offense yes, has no idea. That, that's the list right there. They got no is, clue. I, they got I, no idea. I don't. I don't know how they're going to line up. I don't know how they're going to handle James White, Sony Michelle, who's going to be where, what are they going to do with the new guys. Um, Julian will be in the slot. I would venture to say that Josh Gordon's going to play, and he's going to play well. And and other than that, I don't know what they're going to look like because this is this is something new and it's something different. But it's not nothing that I'm afraid of. I think they have the best offensive mind and out of all the coordinators in football. Let's talk about new and different. Okay. The Giants at the Cowboys. Cowboys minus seven. Juice is minus 115 there. There's nothing new and different about this game. Well, hold on, hold on. The total is 45. 325 p.m. on Fox. It's at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. It, the only thing that could be different here is you might not see Zeke. And you probably won't see Zeke. Now, he has flown back to Dallas as of today. I mean, he just got in tonight. Yeah, but usually if you practice by Wednesday, you can play. You think they're going to get a deal done? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's been reported all day today that it's looking like $90 million over six years. Jeez, Louise, what in the world? It, it, that's only 15 a year. 15 that's, a year. That's, that's a lot less than Todd Gurley. I mean, agreed, but that's still a lot of money. I, yes. I bet there's a lot of guaranteed money in that, too. I, I bet it is. So ninety million over six. I think years. the deal gets done. I think Zeke plays. All right. Now, what about on the other side for the Giants? I think Eli's marching out there. It, it, he may be marching out, but if things are going poorly, how short of a leash does he have at this point, based on how well Daniel Jones has played? I think a lot of that depends on how the offense looks. If the offensive line is bad, Dallas's defense is legit. They are oh, yeah. real. And they've got some dudes signed and locked up on the defensive side. And if they come to play and you see they, they see blood and they're going and they're being aggressive, I don't know that I put Daniel Jones in this game. They had, what was the stat on them last year? They had nine of their ten wins were one possession one wins. One possession games, yes. And now you're you're asking people to give up a touchdown. What side would you roll with? I, I'm I'm staying as far away from this game as I could possibly stay. If I had to put money on this game, I would I would probably lay the points or not lay the points. I'd probably take the points. I'd take the Giants. And here's my logic: Eli has absolutely owned the Cowboys. Now I know this ain't the same Eli that's always been, but if he's got one game left in the tank, it's this week be- it's week one. He's not afraid of Jerry World at all. That man has walked away with. Many a wins out of that place, and if Zeke doesn't play, that offense totally changes. All right, so I would I would lay the point, and the fact they play so many close games, I would take the dog. I would just take whatever points I could get. The fact that I'm getting the touchdown, that's just crazy. That uh, I think yeah. that's I think that's too much. Um, who's uh, who's your straight up winner? Are you gonna go with no? The I, I, I would go with the Cowboys. Go with the Cowboys. Yeah, I could see I could see the Cowboys winning that, by that defense here. is really good. Yeah. I mean they're they're really good on defense. I do agree. All right, move on from that one. The Sunday noon game, CBS National. National broadcast. That's right. For the Titans 
and the Browns. The Browns are a five and a half point favorite. Total is 45 and a half. 12 p.m. CBS at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. Man, the Browns are the story of the NFL. Yes, sir. Baker Mayfield, Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, Nick Chubb. You got Freddie Kitchens. You got all sorts of stuff going on. Tell me about this. I, I've, I've heard that maybe the head coach and the OC aren't getting along as well as people thought. Like, there's been stories here and there about that. Uh, how good can this defense be without Greg Williams? Uh, oh, God. You know, I mean, fill, fill this me is, in. This is what's wrong with the, the offseason being as long as it is. I agree. Is we're, we're, now, we're now literally making up fairy tales and creating things from dust. Just because we need something to write about and we can't write another puff piece about how this team looks great. And they don't look like they have any flaws. They are, from top to bottom, on the roster, the most talented team in the NFL. If they're not the most, they're in the conversation. Okay? They, got a, is... they got a real coach. A real coach on defense in Steve Wilkes. You think Greg Williams was holding that thing together? Are you kidding me right now? Are we having this conversation? Steve Wilkes is... A hundred times the man that Greg Williams wants to be, wishes he was. Are you crazy? And and <laughs> Kitchens and Todd Munkin, like, listen, I follow this team like crazy, and there's no problem. This is people needing something to write about. And does Munkin want to call plays? Yeah, he wants to call plays. He knew when he took the job, Kitchens is calling the plays. Freddie yeah. said last year, when I get the gig, I'm not letting it go. I like play calling. I like having that control. He's got the relationship with Baker. But I don't think we have any problem there. What's the problem? I, we, we, there's not one. You got there's that. absolutely not one. Now, <laughs> now, let's move to the Titans. The Titans have been so mismanaged and mishandled. I, Marcus Mariota has a problem staying healthy. I'm going to tell you something. That defense on the other side, we talk about the offense. Everybody puffs up the offense. And, and everybody gives out the stats from last year because for some reason last year's team – they think has something to do with this year's team, where they average giving up 32 points a game or whatever bull crap that is. You take that, you roll it up, you throw it in the garbage. It's absolute trash. This is going to be one of the best defenses in the NFL. Miles Garrett is going to compete for Defensive Player of the Year. I, mark my words, he's going to be in that conversation. He's going to be in it all year. But he's not the only one. The backfield's loaded. Linebackers are loaded. Defensive line's loaded. They've got talent on that side of the ball, too. I promise you. They got a real coach coaching them. I promise you. The Titans are going to struggle. Marcus Mariota, better hope he gets out of this game in one piece. I, I knew that by bringing up those different storylines, it was going to get you fired up. I don't know what That's rock the most passionate you, I don't know what been. rock you. Listen, I wasn't trying to just blow my team, okay? Everyone knows that I love the Browns. Everybody knows I'm in on them. I'm in the tank, and I'm in the yeah. tank as far as you can go. But the problem is, is when you make something up from air, and you're actually putting that out there, that's just bullshit. You can't. Oh, it's, hey, you it's just not can't me. do that. That's actual literal stories that have come I understand across. that. I understand that. Like I ain't making. If it up. someone says that, well, I don't know what the defense is going to do without Greg Williams. What are you talking about? There's I, nine. I, there's I nine Greg guys Williams at a bar a, in Cleveland that could coach that defense. I, I don't think Greg Williams is a bad coach. I'm not saying he's a bad coach. You're just saying it don't necessarily matter. You think he's coach. better than Steve Wilkes? I, I don't know about that either. I would venture to say if you interview every general manager in the NFL, they every upgraded, head coach in the NFL, yeah, they, they would all the, say, uh, I would offer Steve Wilkes a contract over, I'd offer Greg Williams a contract. Yeah. I might be wrong on that, but I think the overwhelming understanding is that Steve Wilkes is Wilkes is an incredible defensive mind and an incredible. There's a reason he got a head coaching job. He actually got one. Yeah. All right. Greg wants one. Greg Greg's wants tried one to get and, one for a while. You know what? Get he gets he's laughed out of the room. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. I, absolutely. All right. Now that you're all fired up, let's talk about Monday night. I'm taking the Browns. I'm taking the point. I'm laying the points. I don't uh, care. They're gonna beat them by a touchdown. I'd already written that down. I'd if they <laughs> if if and here's now now here's the truth about this game. Okay. If the Browns come out and they lay an egg week one, after all this hype, after the way they've beefed this team up, they've done all, Baker's talked all that noise, and, and, and all those guys keep talking all that noise, and they come out, they lay an egg against the Titans, 
against a team that nobody thinks is better than eight and eight, then then what the hell are we doing? Then it's well, all you for not. You're at home. That place is going to be electric. All right. So let's say that they they win, but they don't cover. Is that laying egg? Yeah. You gotta be, if you can't beat them by a touchdown. This is not a great Titans team. They're gonna know, be man, without, their like, offensive line is gonna struggle. They got offensive linemen out with suspensions. Agreed. Man, they're gonna like this. But they do also have more talent on offense than they've had in a long, long time. This defense has been built for games like this. Like I think the Titans are pretty good. I'm taking the Titans plus five and a half, but I got the Browns winning. That's fine. Like I think that this could be a field goal game. That's fine. And so, and that's that ain't nothing against the Browns. I'm just I'm curious now if that is considered a disappointment if you don't win by enough. Like I think winning in the NFL is hard. I do think winning in the NFL is hard. And and, and this is it's still the Titans have gone nine and seven three straight years. Like the this is a good football team. Regardless of what everybody thinks in the offseason, I, I mean, everybody thought that Cleveland was still going to be garbage last year. They were garbage last year. And they ended up going, what, 6 9 and 1? Or 7 8 and 1? 7 8 and 1. Whatever. Yeah. No, they were fine as soon as they got the dead weight of Hugh Jackson off of them. But whenever before the season started, nobody trusted Hugh. Nobody believed in Hugh. I believed in him. I thought they were. I thought they'd win nine wins last year. Yeah, yeah you had them. You because had them I thought in spite in of Hugh, they've got all of this talent. And now they've got now they a, don't have a Hugh. real coaching staff. And, That's right. And I don't no know what work. to expect from Freddie Kitchens. I know this. Todd Munkins, he's he's a really, really good OC. He's been in the league for a long time and he knows what he's doing. I know that Steve Wilkes, been in the league for a long time and knows what he's doing. And, I, and I, you I got tr- talent. I tr- yes, and they have talent. I trust the fact that all Freddie has to do is just manage the locker rooms, manage the coaching staff. He's going to call plays. That's great. He's super involved in the offense. I got no beef with that. I'm just telling you, there's too much talent and there's too many professionals on this team to come out flat week one. Yeah. It can't happen. Cannot happen. Moving on, let's talk Monday night. Okay. Houston Texans at the New Orleans Saints. The Saints are a seven-point favorite. That is minus 105 on the juice there. 53 is the total. 6.10 p.m. on ESPN. They got a doubleheader that night. It's in the Superdome. It's in New Orleans. I don't like the Texans. I don't like the Texans very much this year. Now, I understand that they traded and got Laramie Tunsil. They, they upgraded their offensive line a little bit. Uh, Deshaun Watson, I like him. I, you know, they did get rid of Jaday Van Clowney, which still, I mean, for traded him for a bag of peanuts. That doesn't like, make this team, this year's roster better. No. By the way. No, it doesn't. That um, makes them worse. I, I'm just, this is only a touchdown and understand, like I just said, it's tough to win games in the NFL. But, I mean, goodness gracious. Like, I think seven is generous here. Like I think I think New Orleans can win this by two touchdowns. Yeah, I do too. I like New Orleans a lot. I would I would take New Orleans. I think they're one of the most complete rosters in the league. I think that, you know, they they've been crazy insane things happening keeping them out of the Super Bowl two years in a row. Uh, and now you've got a really talented complete roster with a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. So and, that's that. Let me yeah. let me give you this little tidbit cuz we always like this. Eighty percent exactly of the money is coming in on Houston. That is bananas. Gimme, 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 gimme. The Saints all that day is long. insane. But the Houstons are the hot flavor of the team, man. Everybody's as soon as luck went down, they're now the massive favorite to win that conference, to win that division. I just don't believe that. I don't know that. A, I don't know that Indianapolis fell from grace completely. No, I don't B, think so. I think Jacksonville is going to be pretty good. I think the Titans are going to be fine. I think the winner of that division could easily be nine and seven. They cannibalize one another, and and that's what we get. Yeah. I don't I don't know that that you can just chalk Houston up there, but for some reason, man, they have been catapulted to being the bee's knees of the of the AFC. That's crazy. I don't get it. I don't get it either. I don't I don't understand that. What I like Watson. I like some pieces they've got. That offensive line is still really bad. Like so they, now they have a really good left tackle and four shitty linemen. Okay, great. You just gave up a really good defensive lineman. 
Okay, but and you and you lose Lamar Miller to the ACL injury. Yeah, I don't and, know how much but that you, hurts you, helps you, but but you you yeah. trade and you get Carlos Hyde, who is right now just a guy, right? But He's, if your line is bad, it, then it really you doesn't can't matter. Anyway. Watson, you can't run the ball. You can't do a lot of things. I mean, I look, I I don't know what's going on outside of Bill O'Brien is running this team like. This year's the last, Kevin Clark and them talked about this on, 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 on their podcast on the Ringer NFL show to where um, without a GM, Bill O'Brien is, is making all these calls. And he's, he's running this team like it is the last year the NFL is ever going to be. And the reason that is is because it is for him. Yeah. And, and I don't understand why ownership allows people like him to, to mortgage the future because they're going all in this year. Yeah. Does, does anybody really think they're a Super Bowl contender? I think they're good. I think they could make the playoffs. I think they could win this division. I don't know that they're overwhelming favorites to make the playoffs no. or to win the division. And and I damn sure don't give them like crazy all – this is a team going all in to win the Super Bowl. I, I'll tell you this. We thought he was getting fired last year. We did. And He rolled off had- an incredible amount of games – just one one possession, yeah. one point wins. Yeah. Like people were giving them games. At some point in time, they I mean, can't was, all be flukes. You got to give him credit. His record is what it was, and they were winning games. But at the end of the day, he's I just still don't about a five hundred coach. I just don't think that's happening this year. I don't think that's happening every. You can't just walk in and, and start chalking up W's like that. What is it? What is Bill? The Brian NFL is too tough. I don't know. That's I'm I'm. Pulling up now, Bill O'Brien, forty-two and thirty-eight in the NFL, one and three in the postseason. That is, uh, he's forty-three and forty-one overall as an NFL coach. So, right down the middle, right down the middle. All right, let's talk about some interesting matchups really quick. Just uh, quick games to hit on, very briefly. Falcons at Vikings. Vikings a four-point favorite. We both love the Vikings this year. Falcons, is there anything to, you know, getting these guys back on defense, changing over to Dirt Cutter on, on offense? I mean, they could look a lot better, and they could be much improved. And and, and we still wouldn't even know at week one if the Vikings come out the way that, that we think they will. I don't know. I mean, yeah, but yeah, if they don't come out good, then we won't know that. If they come out, you know, with their butthole on fire, then, yeah, it'll be yeah, it we'll be shocked and, and we'll have to reevaluate things. Um, two dome teams playing an opening weekend in a dome. Yeah, like, it'll be speedy. Rams at the Panthers. Look, Los Angeles traveling over to Charlotte for a noon kickoff. Uh, obviously, we're gonna have some of these in our gambling picks and whatnot. We'll talk about that one in there. But yeah, that's that's a rough one. Uh, do we know what's uh, Cam's gonna be fine? Right? Yeah, Cam he should. I mean, fine. they've they've been saying all along he's gonna play week. He's one. gonna be fine. All right, so Rams coming off of a Super Bowl loss. Typically, that means not good things for right. the losers. So. That team does not usually make the playoffs. Now, the Eagles, uh, well, the Eagles came back and nope. they won the Super Bowl. So They won the Super Bowl, but then yeah, they it's... didn't make the playoffs. No, no, they, they made the playoffs last year. Yeah, yeah they did. They, they won they, the division. They beat the, they beat the Bears. That's right. They won the division, beat yeah. the Bears, lost. Yeah. Um, but no, they lost the division to the Cowboys. But they, they were a wild card team. Chiefs at the Jaguars. Jacksonville, plus four at home. The Chiefs, year two. We're going to talk to our buddy JT about this. Yeah, TJ, we will. Uh, TJ, I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we will talk to TJ in the gambling picks about the Chiefs and the Jaguars. So tune in to that one. Colts at the Chargers. Chargers minus six and a half. Jacoby Brissett officially taking over. Frank Reich, still a fantastic coach. They still got a good offensive line there. Chargers, however, really, really good team. They are built well. The foundation is working there. Monday night, the second of the doubleheader. The Broncos at the Raiders. This is a pick em. I am shocked that it is a pick em. Me too. Um, I love that it is a pick em. We will talk about this in the Gambling Picks as well. So make sure you check out the NFL Gambling Picks show. Again, this is wrapping up here, but... You can check out the other videos as well, our official gambling picks. They'll be on the spreadsheet, which is on the website. 
They will also be in the Gambling Picks video, Gambling Picks segment. Go over there, leave some comments, hit subscribe on YouTube. Thank you to Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can find more information about them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us at winningcureseverything.com. We'll see you guys again later. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.